Throughout history there have been a number of acts of regicide, in which kings, queens or members of the royal family in a nation were killed by assassins. Some attempts were successful, but others failed with leaders such as Vladimir Lenin, surviving assassination attempts. Lenin was attacked by a woman, Fanny Kaplan, and despite this ultimately failing, he was affected for the rest of his life from the injuries that day he sustained. But another woman who in Russia sought to assassinate a leader was Sofia Perovskaya, who was part of the assassination of Alexander II of Russia. But for her actions she was sentenced to death, and was executed despite being just 27 years old. Join us today as we look at the execution of Sofia Perovskaya, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Sofia was born in St. Petersburg, and her family were rather wealthy and were aristocrats. The family were descendants of Elizabeth of Russia through marriage, and Sofia's father was a military governor of St. Petersburg. She spent her early life in the Crimea, and she was not the most well-educated, but Sofia taught herself to read, and she then lost herself in books. But the family then moved to St. Petersburg, and she went to a school, and whilst there she became close with a number of girls who were interested in the radical movement. Sofia Perovskaya, at the age of 16, then left home as her father was not happy with her friends, and their political beliefs and ideas. But she then became part of a revolutionary society, the Circle of Tchaikovsky. She then went to work in different areas, but she became a teacher and also a medical assistant. She was described as, in her moral conceptions, she was a vigorist, but not in the least of the sermon preaching type. Perovskaya was a populist to the very bottom of her heart, and at the same time a revolutionist, a fighter of the truest steel. She said to me once, we have begun a great thing. Two generations perhaps will succumb in the task, and yet it must be done. She then occupied a number of apartments in St. Petersburg, where revolutionaries and rebels would meet up. They did this in Sophia's apartments in secret, but in 1874 she was arrested and was imprisoned in the Peter and Paul fortress. But she was then acquitted after being imprisoned for a number of years. But then in 1878 she was arrested yet again and was banished to the Olenets Governet. But she then managed to escape as she was sent to exile and she went undercover trying to avoid capture. She was a member of a terrorist group but Sofia Perovskaya went to Kharkov and she tried to organise the freeing of political prisoners from the prison there. She continued to get involved in different rebel actions and she also took part in speeches and creative propaganda to distribute amongst soldiers and students. But then in November 1879, she was involved in an attempt to blow up the Imperial train as it travelled from St. Petersburg to Moscow, but this attempt failed. But Sofia would not stop in her attempts to assassinate. Sofia Perovskaya took part in the planning and preparation for the assassination attempts of Alexander II of Russia. The Emperor near to Moscow in 1879, and then in Odessa the following year, was targeted. However, she was then involved in the assassination attempt in St. Petersburg that killed him on the 1st of March 1881. The Emperor every Sunday went to participate in military roll call, and he then had done this for a number of years. The Emperor's carriage was followed by two slaves, carrying the Chief of Police and the Chief of his Guard Staff. The route passed via the Catherine Canal, and the streets were lined with members of the public. One of the assassins then threw a white package which was wrapped in a handkerchief. He later said, after a moment's hesitation, I threw the bomb. I sent it under the horse's hooves, in the supposition that it would blow up under the carriage. The explosion knocked me into the fence. The explosion had only damaged the bulletproof carriage of Alexander II, and he was shaken up but was not hurt. However, a second member of the Narodnaya Volya, who was stood by the fence, threw something at the Emperor's feet. It was then said, I was deafened by the new explosion, burned, wounded and thrown to the ground. Suddenly, amid the smoke and snowy fog, I heard His Majesty's weak voice crying, Help! Gathering what strength I saw, I jumped up and rushed to the Emperor. His Majesty was half lying, half sitting, leaning on his right arm. Thinking he was merely wounded heavily, I tried to lift him, but the Tsar's legs were shattered and the blood poured out of them. Twenty people with wounds of varying degrees lay on the sidewalk and on the street. Some managed to stand, others to crawl, still others tried to get out from underneath the bodies that had fallen on them. Through the snow, debris and blood 
you can see fragments of clothing, epaulets, sabres and bloody chunks of human flesh. The bomb caused chaos and Alexander, who was bleeding to death, had his legs torn to pieces and his stomach was torn open and his face was mutilated badly. He was then taken away to the Winter Palace, but then within 15 minutes or so he died. Sofia Perovskaya was the closest friend of the wife of a member of the Committee of the Assassins, and was key in directing the bomb plot, and with this she was linked to them. The night before the attack, Sofia had also helped to build the bombs and the weapons. She had a key involvement in the assassination, as she gave a signal to the assassins to carry out the attack, and she was the one who gave the signal to attack when the first bomb was thrown. One of the assassins, Nikolai Rysakov, who threw the bomb under the Tsar's carriage, would turn across to the authorities, and he was cooperative with the investigators. He gave testimony telling of the other participants, and the Tsarist police arrested Sophia and the others. Shortly before her trial, she wrote to her mother saying, My darling, I implore you to be calm and not to grieve for me, for my fate does not afflict me in the least, and I shall meet it with complete tranquillity, for I have long expected it and known that sooner or later it must come. I have lived as my convictions dictated, and it would have been impossible for me to have acted otherwise. Sofia Perovskaya was then tried by the Special Tribunal of the Ruling Senate, and she was then sentenced to death by hanging. She was the first woman in Russia who was sentenced to death for taking part in terrorism. But on the morning of the 15th of April, the prisoners, including Sofia, were taken to the parade ground of the Semenyovsky Regiment, where their execution would occur. They were all dressed in black prison uniforms, and on their chests read a placard that said regicide. Sofia Perovsky was put in a cart and was drawn through the city by horses, and it was said that a 100,000 people came to watch her executions. They were taken to the gallows, and they were then led up the stairs of the gallows. Priests then administered the last rites, and the assassins were greeted by them, and they kissed the crucifix. As the priests left, the assassins bid each other farewell, but Sophia would not go near the man who told of them. Along with four others, Sophia Perovsky was then hanged on a large gallows at the same time. Sophia Perovsky was an assassin who was a mastermind behind the assassination and death of the Russian emperor. She was a woman who helped to build the bombs involved in the plot, but despite coming from noble roots, she was an anarchic character who wanted to change Russia but ultimately she was sentenced to death for her actions, and along with the other co-conspirators, she was executed on the gallows. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.